and welcome back i am the electrical code coach i'm super excited about today's video we're going to continue in our 2023 nec code changes for load calculations this is article 220 and this is part two because there are so many changes let's jump right into it so the first thing i want to touch on is that table 220.42a is a quote new table it's really an old table, but it's just been moved. It was previously table 220.12. I don't know why they moved it, but they moved it to 220.42a. And that's going to be our VAs per square foot for non-dwelling units. So it'll tell us the VAs per square foot for a courthouse, the VAs per square foot for dormitories. And that's how we're going to calculate our VAs per square foot for our lighting for uh, non-dwelling unit occupancies. I do want to make this note that they added it in the 2020 and carried it on in the 2023 that this table does include the 125% needed for lighting loads because they're a continuous load. So when you look at this table, the 125% has already been factored in for you. There's no need to factor it in again. Now let's move on to table 220.45 which was previously table 220. I made a small typo there. Let's go ahead and correct it. Table 220.42 for lighting demand factors. So they've moved this table. Same table looks almost identical. And what it did, what it is, is they just moved it. So it was our lighting demand factors, which included our resident, you know, our dwelling units, our other several commercial areas. And then if it wasn't listed in that table, Remember, we would use the all other occupancies part, which was 100% of the calculation. So they've moved this around. And I'll talk about, you know, what the significance is and if it even matters that they're moving some of these tables. Let's move on. The next one is table 220.47, which was previously table 220.44 for non-dwelling unit receptacle demand factors. And that's the last table that they moved around. So they moved some tables around here and you say, well, coach, what does it matter? Well, it does matter if you're the one testing right now. So let's say you're on the 17 or on the 20 and your state's going to be on it for maybe another year or maybe another half a year or maybe another two years. Well, I've got already full programs pre-built, ready to roll. We know they work to get your license using the 17 and the 2020. Well, I'm going to have to come back in and create a whole new program for the 2023 with the way that these tables have moved around. So if you want a program that's built, tried, true, ready to roll, also, you know, one that we know works and a recipe that we know works, I would highly recommend considering getting your license now because I'm going to revamp the 2017 and the 2020 version this fall but it looks like I'm going to have to make a whole new version for the 2023, or at least certain lessons are going to have to be brand new based on this new footprint of Article 220. So just keep that in mind. If you want to, you know, you work on the pre, you know, the previous platform, I highly recommend getting your license now because they've moved a bunch of stuff. Now let's move on to 220.50. This, they just cleaned house a little bit and they, they clarified where you're going to get your conductor sizing from and your branch circuit or feeder load calculations from. And it says for motors and air conditioning equipment, and it has a part A and a part B. And what it does is it leads you to those respective places in the code book where you're going to go get those. So you'll sneak over in that part of the code book. You'll go get your load calculation for your motor or your air conditioner. Then you'll come back and you'll add it to your load calculation that you're doing. I do want to make a note here for the 75% rule. If you have studied, you know, low calculations at all, we're allowed to do a 75% demand factor for appliances where there, when there's four or more appliances. Well, there's always been a laundry list of things that were not allowed to, you know, to, to apply that 75% rule, including the range, the dryer, things like that. Well, now they've had to go in and specifically include electric vehicle supply equipment because I could see how somebody could be like, hey, that's a fixed piece of equipment. And, you know, I want to do a 75% demand factor on that. In previous code cycles, there was nothing that you permitted, prohibited you from doing that. It's a small appliance, you could say. And, um, you know, it's one of those things that you could say, hey, I think this should be, uh, you know, allowed to be 
applied to this part of the demand factor. Sorry, I'm looking, I got the code book here in front of me and I've got, uh, you know, you guys, I'm trying to convey this here. I wanted to get right to the section. So I'm here now. It says household electric, cooking equipment, clothes dryers, spacing equipment, air conditioners, all of those previously in other code cycles, we could not apply the 75% rule, the demand factor, which would reduce our load. Now, part five, they specifically added electric vehicle supply equipment. So that's an important distinction that we got to watch out for in the field and also in our testing. All right, now let's head to table 220.55. And they did make a little bit of a change here. And I, this is the first change that I know of in table 220.55 that I can remember. And what they've done here is they've added a few more notes. And I think they really just cleaned house. They kind of separated some things so it wasn't just a blob. And it looks a little bit cleaner and it's a little bit tighter. And I hadn't got too far into if they added a bunch of new information yet or if they made some major changes. When I make my 2023, you know, electrical uh, code coach training program for getting your license, I'll be able to dive farther into it. But they've added, uh, they already had notes four and five, but they've added notes six and seven. And I think they just separated some things to make it a little bit clearer and easier to understand. The table 220.55 previously used to stop at note 5. Now let's cover the all-new sections and we'll be all done with Article 220. I wish I could have went into every single teeny tiny change. I feel like we did a pretty good exhaustive list, but there's a lot of little uh, minute changes that they did that I didn't cover that I'll probably have to cover when we do the Code Coach training program. So these are brand new sections in Article 220. 220.70, Energy Management Systems, 220.110, Healthcare Facilities, and Part, I think that would be Part 7, I'm not huge on Roman numerals, I think that's Part 7, is going to be marinas, boat yards, floating buildings, docking facilities, and for commercial and non-commercial use. This is super important because these are things that were not previously addressed in the code in this area. Not saying that they did not have calculations in other places, but now we have specific calculations because marinas, boat yards, floating buildings, and docking facilities are one of our uh, weak points uh, for the electrical community. It's one of the most dangerous places, and it's continued to be dangerous up until just very recently. A lot of deaths have occurred in trying to get some major changes. So I think load calculations, new regulations, and us pushing them very hard are going to be one of the ways that we can affect Project Zero, which is having the deaths associated with the use of electricity to zero by 2023 and also at the same time being able to promote life safety and also commercial settings. So I am the electrical code coach. I just want to see you guys win. I want you to know that I'm praying for you today. Listen, go out there and get them today. Fight hard. I want you to do something for me today. I want you to take a junior employee or if you've got a senior employee that's, you know, not been in the game as long as you, you know, older than you physically, but has not been in the game as long as you. I want you to take them today and I want you to start mentoring them. I want you to invest in them a little bit. Tell them a little bit about the code. Work with them. Be extra nice to them a little bit today. It's just something amazing will start happening in your life when you start investing in other people. It's amazing how things will just start hunting you down. Opportunities will start hunting you down. Blessings will start hunting you down. So I want you today to focus and be mindful of looking down to someone that's below you and helping them get up where you are. I am the Electrical Code Coach, and if I can help you in life or business, you can always email me at electricalcodecoach at gmail.com. Let's get to it.